Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbatcher.com, out here for another gun review, and today I'm talking about this guy right here, which is the Knight's Armament SR25 APC, Advanced Precision Carbine. Before we dive in, special thanks to our friends over at Shooting Surplus for sending this out, not only so I could put in time with it, bring you guys a review, but also so I could take it cross country, which I did, on the 2021 Coast to Coast Tour giving a lot of people opportunity to get behind this gun and shoot it. So what is it? It is a pretty iconic gun of the entire GWAT, Global War on Terror. Knight's Armament has been making guns for the military for a long time to include some of their like semi-auto sniper systems, one of which being the SR-25. And this right here is their APC advanced precision carbine so basically a very accurate 16 inch 308 gas gun this gun has some pretty cool stuff going on with it and pretty much all of it is knight's armament across the board i think the only thing this thing maybe didn't ship with that wasn't like knight's armament is probably this magpul stock and initially came with one of the like a2 grips kind of gross I basically see it as a placeholder, just like, I don't know, stock sights on a Glock. No one really wants to shoot those. Personally, I hate shooting the A2 grip, but I ended up swapping that out. Past that, pretty much most everything I've been shooting on here has been stock, except for, I will say, the muzzle device. The muzzle device that it comes with is their flash hider, which is made to mount up with their suppressors but since I don't have one of their suppressors and I don't not like shooting suppressed, went ahead and threw on Q's muzzle device. This is their flash hider. Something I also didn't realize is with military guns, Knight's Armament, once you move past 5.56, that, what is it? Half by 28 thread pitch for barrels. They basically go right past 5.8 by 24, I guess, to whatever this is. I think it's like three quarter something but it is not your standard kind of typical ar10 308 thread pitch it's for much larger barrels to include like 338 stuff like that with that q does make this flash hider specifically for military guns and it's basically backwards compatible with all their other stuff to include all of their cans like thunder chicken trash panda stuff like that so I promptly changed that flash hider out just so I could shoot this thing suppressed because I like shooting suppressed. On the back of the receiver, right here on the right side as well as the left side, there are QD cups with anti-rotation cups in them. Really handy depending on how you like to run your sling. And then moving forward, you have the Knight's Ornament Selector. I will say really nice, smooth, and distinct movement from fire to safe. May not seem like a big deal, but a lot of USGI ones, really gritty, not smooth at all. The other thing I will say is really well thought out AMB safety. This, because of the scallop here, when you actually move it to fire as a right-handed shooter, having that scallop keeps it to minimal, if not no interference with your firing hand, which is really huge. Moving forward, you have their two-stage trigger. Pretty nice, not as nice, honestly, in my experience as some of your aftermarket triggers, but again, military customer, gonna be kind of favoring the heavier side than the lighter side. And then right up here, we have our ambi bolt release. Once the bolt's locked back, you can press that with the trigger finger of your firing hand. If you're right-handed, send the bolt forward. Makes for really fast reloads if you actually train to use that. The guns also come equipped with their folding iron sights. These right here, pretty cool. Once they're dialed in, you can actually adjust them for elevation, which again, it's pretty awesome. And then of course, you can adjust your windage with this knob here, turning it left and right. And they fold down when they're not needed. This gun uses their URX4 rail, and on the right, as well as the left side, you have QD inserts with anti-rotation cuts, again, depending on where you wanna place your sling. And this one happens to be M-Lock. They also offer a key mod offering, 
And then up front, again, we have our fold down backup iron sights by Knight's Armament. And back in here, the gas block and of course the barrel. And as I mentioned, I changed out this muzzle device. Usually though, it'll come with their flash hider. A couple other little things. One, enlarged trigger guard, which is pretty nice, especially when you're wearing gloves. And over here on the left side, ambi mag release for all the south paws. And then also their charging handle. Basically a enlarged latch coming off the left side, I guess it would be. And again, once that thing is locked back, if we are right-handed, right here we have that bolt release, sending it forward without having to basically any type of extra movement. Pretty handy all in all. Which brings me to how I use this gun. Well, initially, after taking it out, getting this thing zeroed, I ended up taking it across the country on the 2021 Coast to Coast Tour giving people the opportunity to shoot this at all the different range days, and it was awesome. Really fun gun to shoot, especially suppressed. I will say they did a really good job with the gas system on here, because it's not an adjustable gas block, but definitely well-tuned, whether you're shooting it unsuppressed or suppressed, which is really nice. Sometimes you'll shoot guns and they're decidedly made to shoot unsuppressed and way over gassed when you actually put a can on them or way over gassed to start with. This definitely not, really nice to shoot. And then after shooting this thing cross country, basically I guess October, 2021, three day night vision course with Amtac shooting, rounding out my kind of series on night vision. And with it, through that series, basically scaled kind of gear as well as capability, starting with like Gen 2, Green Foss, PVS-14, and Skull Crusher, and like a high point carving and stuff. Finally ending with dual tube PVS-31s, this Knight's SR-25 with a BE Myers Mall. Totally tricked out and shot it through that course, through some inclement weather, and it did awesome. On top of that, Definitely shot at some other, just kind of some shoot house runs, different things along those lines. Through it all, it has definitely performed. course for some people real metric is accuracy is the gun a laser beam well to that end i ended up actually throwing magnified optic on here like more than just a one to eight and took it out to the range with some different loads shooting five shot groups at 100 yards and this is what i got initially starting with some knockoff m118 lr first group coming in at 1.19 moa my second group coming in at 1.79 MOA. Switching over to some South African surplus, 149 grain. First group came in at 1.33 MOA. And my second group coming in at 2.20 MOA. Then moving over some Black Hills, 168 grain open tip match. First group coming in at 1.74 MOA with a flyer. Without that flyer, 0.91 MOA. My second group coming in at 0.79 MOA. Then switching to some Federal Gold Medal Match 175 grain. First group coming in with a flyer at 1.90 MOA. 
without that flyer, 0.82 MOA. And of course, my last group, again with a flyer coming in at 1.64 MOA, without that flyer, 0.30 MOA. What are the takeaways? I had a bunch of flyers. Probably should have shot three round groups because you could get lucky three times in a row. Now, here's the thing. Better shooter out there, I'm sure could get better groups, but this thing is absolutely sub MOA with good ammo. I wish I had more different types of ammo to shoot through it, but 2021, Ammo's kind of hard to come by. And I will say with that federal gold medal match though, thing shoots amazing. The actual target or test target this thing ships with, like 0.57 MOA, something like that. Really good five shot group. And this is 100%, I think, a really accurate gun. I think if you are a consistently sub MOA shooter, which I probably am not always. And with good ammo, yeah, pretty much sub MOA all day long with good stuff. Even with that South African surplus, still like two MOA. And I know people are like, I can't believe two MOA is terrible. Okay, like shooting from a concrete bench at paper, like, yeah, it's probably pretty bad. This was not made to shoot paper from a concrete bench. And two MOA is like, incredibly acceptable especially when you start looking at rack guns but this is capable of much much more than that 100 percent and lastly kind of rounding out my experience with this gun i actually ended up going pig hunting for feral hogs down in texas with my eldest son jada and he and i myself with this sr25 him with a radian model one basically brought down a big boar which was a really cool experience and on top of that, I fast forward to, I guess, the end of last year, as of filming this, 2021, I actually brought down a awesome, beautiful, big white tail buck with this gun as well. Definitely a capable gun. And yeah, I put in a lot of time with it, just kind of across the board, whether it's a coast to coast, three day night vision course, out hunting, and it does a good job. What are kind of, some of my takeaways from it. One, it's kind of a pig, not a light gun. And if you don't need 308, kind of why shoot 308? Like it comes at a cost, like, yeah, like that's a bigger bullet and absolutely more capable, more devastating, especially like terminal performance than 5.56. That can be a really good thing depending on use case, but it comes at a cost, one weight and just recoil impulse. There's also like a monetary cost as far as just ammunition, if and when you can find it. Not been easy the last couple of years. And yeah, wait to include ammo. Having like three magazines of 20 across your chest, it's pretty heavy. And on top of that, you have like 20 rounds in each one rather than like 30 or 40. Yes. 40 round magazines by Magpul. But overall, it's a cool gun. I mean, part of it, just historically, SR-25 was used a ton in the last 20 years during the GWAT, Global War on Terror. And it has a pretty storied past. Really, In my experience, have I ran into anything I don't care for or any problems? To the end of malfunctions, I will say this has done a great job for me. Shooting it suppressed tends to dry it out fairly quickly. Definitely want to keep it lubed. Only actual kind of malfunctions I've ran into with it have been ammo related. I had some pretty crappy ammo and was getting a ton of pop primers in basically every 308. I think it was just loaded too hot. And at one point, actually a couple points to include on the Coast to Coast Tour, as well as actually at that three day night vision course, ended up shooting it and having a pop primer. And when that happened, basically a little piece of that primer came down, got lodged under essentially the trigger and basically deadlined a gun. Something else that not malfunction, but just kind of weird is the SR25 magazines. They drop free, especially when you hold it vertically. 
but for whatever reason this one's actually loaded at 20. for whatever reason the magpole magazines make sure i'm hitting it because my fingers are cold again fully loaded magazine not dropping tray i don't know don't know really what the deal is that happened with obviously this magazine as well as every other like 20 or 25 round Magpul P-Mag that I've tried. Again, Knights SR25 mags, they work great. For whatever reason, polymer ones seem to kind of stick in there. Not really sure what that's about. Who do I think that's gonna be good for? One, someone that wants and needs a accurate 308 battle rifle. This thing's pretty incredible. Or two, someone that honestly just wants to own part of the legacy. Knights Armament made some incredible guns to include all their SR-25s, SR-15s that basically fought all through the GWAT. Incredible guns, still doing work across the world. But this right here, APC, I think is pretty awesome. I mean, pretty compact, 16-inch barrel, incredibly accurate 308 battle rifle. Is it expensive? Yeah, it's expensive. On the one hand, it's Knights Armament. And on the other hand, like it's a really accurate, guaranteed with actual test targets, like 308 battle rifle. Price wise, through shooting surplus, about 4,900 bucks. You're like, I could buy, then go buy that. If you don't want a Knight's Armament or need something that is arguably overbuilt and incredibly accurate, turnkey from a company, not cobbled together on bootleg blim anderson lower yeah you'll probably pay for it approximately 4900 bucks overall i think it's a pretty rad gun though and yeah pretty fun to shoot especially being able to stretch this thing out and yeah shoot it in courses run through shoot house with it or even out there hunting kind of across the board but as always thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com Look forward to seeing you next time.